Well, welcome uh, to everybody on the line. Um, we have a nice crew watching, uh, over 55 people. I know you, we can't see everybody who's watching, but uh, you are joined by a fair number of people, I'm sure, from across Nunatuavit. Welcome to our news conference. My name is Kelly Broomfield, Chief Communications Officer with the Nunatuavit Community Council. I'd now like to turn this over to President Todd Russell. Thank you, Kelly. Ulukut and Atilihai, Tadiabunga. Good day and welcome. My name is Todd Russell. I am the president of the Nunatuhaba Community Council, and I proudly represent the Inuit of Nunatuhaba, a strong and resilient people who continue to live and carry out the traditions of our ancestors. I am joined by some of my fellow governing councillors here this morning and our longest serving employee, Pauline Nelson. As we address you, the media and our people on the recent federal court decision. Today we celebrate. Today we celebrate an unequivocal win in the federal court. Today we have been vindicated. The federal court decision upholds NCC's memorandum of, of understanding and our recognition of indigenous rights and self-determination with Canada. It dismisses the Inu Nation case against us that sought to quash our MOU and it awarded the NCC its costs for the court case. This is a very good and significant day for Nunatuvid Inuit and all our people. Our MOU, which was contested by the Inu Nation and the Nunatsiva government who supported that contestation remains intact. The MOU is valid. And I want to personally thank our legal team for all of their hard work representing us with such integrity and respect in the courtroom. And some of them are here today. The court decision means that Canada and NCC should be able to continue negotiations without interference by other Indigenous groups or the court that we have every right to be at the negotiating table to discuss and negotiate our Section 35 rights and who the beneficiaries of those rights are. The federal court found that Canada did not owe any duty to consult the Inu Nation when it signed our MOU and that it does not impact any of Inu Nation's assertive rights. And for that matter, it does not impact any of the negotiated rights of the Nunatsiva government. This, despite the allegations of the Inu Nation and the Nunatsiva government that our process is negatively impacting them. Throughout this journey, this legal journey, which has been ongoing for nearly five years, the Inu Nation and Nunatsiva government have waged a targeted and sometimes violent misinformation campaign against NCC, and it has been harmful. There's no doubt that this court case has formed part of that malicious campaign. The court's decision, though, counters those allegations made by these groups. The federal court restated that NCC had previously provided evidence to support a credible claim that we are an Aboriginal people under Section 35 of the Constitution based upon our Inuit ancestry and tradition. This includes that NCC is owed a duty to consult. And this is particularly important with a view to new and potential resource developments because it is obvious and it is clear that projects can only proceed based on consultations and negotiations with impacted indigenous groups. And it is only through negotiations that the free, prior and informed consent of Nunatuv and Inuit can be achieved. This MOU follows decades of advocacy, relationship building and extensive genealogical, archeological and anthropological research 
to support our land claim submission to Canada. We first filed that claim in 1991, but we have always been confident in the facts, in our history, in the evidence, and the law surrounding this court case. Our claims to land, language, culture, and rights are consistent, they're clear, and they are evidenced by the archeology, span the history, the genealogy, and yes, by the living memories that we have of our ancestors. And now it is up to Canada. It is up to Canada to advance the important work of negotiations at the RIRSD table. It is up to Canada to live up to his commitments made to NCC and Nunatubit Inuit by Prime Minister Trudeau and his government, the latest commitment being in 2021. These commitments include advancing the provisions of our MOU and making progress on community confidence building measures to address the priorities of our people. Priorities like healthcare, fisheries, infrastructure, and education. There really is a better way forward. And we must work to ensure a legacy that will impact future generations positively. We must chart a path where we work collaboratively and cooperatively for the health and well being of all of our peoples in this land. We have a responsibility to do better. Today, we call upon Canada to once again live up to its mandate of reconciliation with Nunatubit Inuit, to respectfully sit at our rights and recognition table and negotiate in good faith, honoring their commitments. Their commitments to ensure that the rights, interests, and priorities of Nunatubit Inuit are heard, recognized, and upheld. My friends, we have always been here. This is our home. This is a great day, and we look forward to the future with optimism. Nakami, and I open up the floor to questions from the media. Thank you. Hi, this is Kelly again. Uh, just so that media understand how this portion is going to work. If you are present and would like to ask a question, we ask that you raise your hand, use the raise your hand function, and we will allow you into, I guess, the virtual room with us uh, as a panelist so that you can ask your question directly to President Russell. And we're going to ask that you limit your question uh, to one and a follow up, uh, just because we do have a few media present here today. So you can go ahead and raise your hand if you would like to ask a question. Okay, Alicia, would our moderator please let Alicia in as a panelist? Oh, Heidi, sorry, he's in the room first. Hi, Heidi, you go ahead. Heidi Adder with CBC. Hi there, can you hear me all right? Perfect. Uh, so I do have more than just the two questions, so I am hopeful that there may be time for more after. Starting, though, my first question is, uh, President Russell, tell me how you can claim this as a victory when all the court decision did was to dismiss a judicial review quashing the MOU. And the judge said, quote, nothing in the MOU, end quote, recognizes NCC as an Aboriginal Peoples of Canada or, or a determination that the NCC holds Section 35 rights. Well, absolutely, it was an unequivocal victory. The court case was fought on the grounds to quash the MOU and that the inundation claimed that it was uh, due uh, or, or owed a duty to consult and that that duty to consult uh, was owed because the, their rights and interests were being negatively impacted by the MOU and about our negotiations with Canada. Uh, on those points, which was what was before the courts, we won on every single point. The court said that there was no evidence of any harm being brought to the Inu nation. Uh, and and in, in this particular context, we can also add the Nunatsi of the government, that there was no impact upon their asserted rights and under negotiated rights, and therefore was not owed a duty to consult. Now, on the more finer points of the law, you, you may want to talk to our lawyers, but we won on those particular points. 
the, 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 the Indonesian had asked that our MOU be quashed, set aside. The court said, no, there's no need to set aside uh, the MOU or to quash this particular process. In, in fact, the court said just the opposite, that this is a valid MOU, that this is a valid process. And yes, your questions about Section 35 and those types of things, the court said very clearly, those types of questions do get addressed at the negotiating table. This is exactly where those types of questions get addressed, is at the negotiating table. And so the courts have said that the negotiating table is a valid place to have those discussions. Absolutely, unequivocally, a win for Nuna Tuhavid and a pushback on the allegations and what the Indo nation in particular supported by the Nunatiba government wanted out of this particular court. I would also say, um, uh, Heidi, that we were awarded costs. That, 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 that in and of itself shows you that we won the court case. Well, thank you. My follow-up now is uh, related to the claims of misinformation. Now, I apologize, this is a bit of a longer question, but it's very important. In an October 11th interview with CBC News, President Russell, you claim that NCC has never had its land claim submission rejected. However, in these court documents with the decision, it states that it was agreed as a fact that NCC had previously made unsuccessful claims under Canada's comprehensive land claims policy. Now, most members of the public are not experts on Indigenous law, but when people hear those two things back to back, it seems like they are contradictory. How does NCC respond to the claim by Inunation that its organization's past statements have misrepresented the history of this issue? Well, obviously they're wrong. Uh, uh, our claim has never been rejected and the court actually found that. The court said that the NCC was never informed that this was the end of the process. Uh, is that right? Uh, they said to Canada and Canada said that is right. You know, the, uh, the, the court also found that Canada had always provided an opportunity for future talks and information. That in fact, that the, the reason for Canada not proceeding with our claim uh, was because of what they said, a lack of evidence. So there, there, it, all of these are very consistent. There was, there's never been a rejection of our claim. There's always been an avenue to, to provide further information. And sometimes we've had to fight for those opportunities and to provide that additional information. And that's what we did in 2016 till about 20, 2018. We provided additional information. We went through a reconciliation process with Canada. That's when we got invited into the RIRSD process in 2018. And then that's when we signed and moved to the MOU in 2019. So there's been nothing inconsistent about, about uh, uh, how our claim has been handled uh, and about how Canada has has viewed uh, our particular claim. Uh, the Indonesia's allegation that our claim was somehow rejected, uh, the nail was in the coffin, that decisions had already been made on the nature of our rights, the existence of our rights, where and how we live, uh, is totally false, wrong, and unfounded. So I just want to be clear on wording, my apologies, just a quick clarification. So the Nunatu of a community council being unsuccessful was not a rejection in your view. It was never a rejection. It was never a rejection of our claim. And at the end of the day, you know, what, where does that lead us? We are at a place now where we are going to have a negotiation process which will talk about Section 35 rights, it will talk about jurisdiction. It will talk about the beneficiary of those particular rights. That's where we are now with the MOU. And, and, and you know, it has been a long, arduous journey of over 30 years to get us even to this particular point. And as the court stated very clearly, we're not at the end of a process here. We're really at the beginning of a process. And we should give this process some time to do its work, unfettered 
by these types of allegations. Thank you for the answers. I have one more follow-up if at the end there is time. Okay, thank you, Heidi. Okay, Alicia, did you want to ask your question on a follow-up? Alicia is with the Canadian Press. Yep. Hi there, thanks for taking our questions. Um, I'm wondering, uh, President Russell, if you can comment on the so-called Indigenous Identity Fraud Summit that happened a few weeks back. NCC was one of the uh, main topics up for discussion from the Innu Nation, but also from the Manitoba Métis Federation and the Chief of Ontario. Um, what, what were you making of uh, that that was happening? I, I, I'm, I'm kind of laughing because, you know, it's, it, it's kind of odd that you have all of these people in a room somewhere so far away from us, you know, making all kinds of spurious allegations. They don't know us. They don't know our families. Uh, uh, they, they don't know where we come from. They have no idea. They're just spouting up, you know, political rhetoric, really, that serves their own political causes. I, 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 I hardly can... can you know, uh, validate uh, 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 any of that kind of, of, of I, I don't know what you would call it, event, uh, um, you know, carnival, uh, uh, if you want. Um, you, you know, I, I don't put much stock into it, just a, 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 a you know, a seemingly a number of disgruntled groups uh, getting together to attack, in some, in some cases, their relatives. Um, and they're kin. Um, and to me, it, it, uh, it, it's, it's not much more than that. Um, and uh, I don't give it any credibility whatsoever. Did you have a follow up question, Alicia? Yeah, I do. And as the um, federal court said that, you know, any nation's claim doesn't quash the MOU. What have negotiations been like with the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations or other um, ministers in the federal government on advancing your, your interests here? Like, have you heard anything since yesterday from any of them? No, I haven't heard anything since yesterday. And 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 as I think you could gather from, from, from my speaking notes and and certainly some of the uh, uh, communications that have gone in, in the past, you know, that process uh, uh, has been arduously slow, uh, uh, sometimes non-existent, uh, you know, no doubt uh, the campaign uh, that has been levied against us uh, uh, may be having some impact in, in that particular regard. Uh, yet this is uh, another day, um, another opportunity. Uh, to advance uh, that particular process, and and we hope, uh, and we just don't hope. Uh, we 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 believe that the government has every every rationale, every reason uh, uh, to 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 become much more uh, animated and involved and engaged in these negotiations, uh, and to advance those particular talks. Okay, thank you very much, President Russell and Alicia. Heidi, if you want, you can ask your additional question and then we'll open up the floor to see if there's any other media that would like to uh, to ask a question. Thank you very much. Just additionally, um, President Russell, what is your response to the justice when it comes to your affidavit, not admitting some of your affidavit uh, because affidavits are based on personal knowledge and the justice said that uh, President Russell cannot have personal knowledge of the ancestral history of Nona Two of a Council, nor does he purport to provide expert opinion evidence. What's your response to that decision on the affidavit? Well, I, I think that probably those are true conclusions to some extent, except to the extent that, you know, I, I do know my own history. I do know my own family. Uh, and, and so do, do our people and our kinship groups. Uh, so I'm not quite clear on what particularly that reference meant. Uh, uh, you know, yes, I'm not an expert in the law, um, and I'm not an archaeologist or a genealogist uh, or any of those things. So I can understand those particular comments, and 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 I think it would be uh, interesting for you to note uh, as well that, that that reference in relation to my affidavit is not a singular comment in the decision. It also speaks to the affidavit of, uh, I believe, Etienne Rich. I believe it speaks to the affidavit uh, uh, of some others, uh, and, and particularly uh, uh, the evidence that was brought by, by the Indonesian. Uh, the judge on many occasions 
uh, said that there, they did not necessarily rely heavily on what the uh, on what evidence that the enemy had brought, or indeed the affidavit of uh, of, of the Grand Chief at the time, Eddie Rich. Thank you very much, uh, President Russell. I'd now like to open the floor to any other media who may be on the line. Again, if you want to ask a question, please use the raise your hand function in Zoom. So I'll just give a minute in case anybody else wants to ask a question from media. Okay, seeing none, I think this concludes the Q&A portion of our news conference. Thank you so much. Thank Not you. Nick. It's a great day.